Now coming to the second part, that is the juxta glomerular apparatus. As the term juxta, what do you understand by juxta? Juxta means nearby. So there is a structure group of three structures which are functioning together. Their functionality is together and they are located very close to the juxta glomerular membrane, the glomerular membrane. That's why it is called as juxta glomerular apparatus. So this area, as I have pointed out here, this area is very, very important. This area forms the juxta glomerular membrane. So in this area, what all things we have? We have the afferent arteriole. We have something called as the lasis cells. The lasis cells is in between them. And finally, we have the macula densa. So the first important substance is JG cells. What is JG cells? Juxta glomerular cells. Then the second one is lasis cells. This is relatively less important. That's why we have numbered it three. So lasis cells. And the second one is macula densa. Macula densa. So this macula densa, as you can see here, where is it located? This location is very, very important because there have been controversies among these locations. But take it from me that it is located exactly in the thick ascending limb. It is located in the thick ascending limb, thick part, thick ascending limb. We will come to know the functions of each of them. First coming to the juxtaglomerular cells. So their juxtaglomerular cells, their location itself is in the afferent arteriole. So they are located in the afferent arteriole. So what does they do? They are like sensors. They will sense whether the kidney is receiving adequate blood or not. They will be sensing the hypotension as well as hypoolemia. Depending upon these sensors, what they will do is they will release a substance called as renin. They are release a substance called as renin. Renins are stored in the vesicles which can be released. So the stimuli for their release is hypotension or hypoolemia. In a similar manner, whenever there is a hypertension or increase in GFR, what it has to do? This has to be sensed and they should reduce the GFR. That feedback mechanism is called as tubuloglomerular feedback, which we will study in some time. But before that, we will try to finish the renin system. That is the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. What does it do? If there is an hypovolemia, it is sensed by the juxtaglomerular apparatus, they will produce a renin. So what is their function? First coming to it, the renin, it is produced from the kidney. The renin is produced from the kidney. And this renin will be helping in converting one substance to the next substance. What is this substance? It is our famous angiotensin. It is converting the angiotensin into angiotensinogen. It is the primary form. That is the angiotensinogen is the primary form. It is converting this angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1. Next, from the angiotensin 1, it has to be converted to a much more active form, which is called as angiotensin 2. This is the most active form. This conversion happens in the lung. This conversion happens in the lung. Whereas angiotensin was available from the liver. So many organs are involved. Angiotensin was available from the liver. liver. Renin is available from the kidney. Now, the lung is taking care of it. The lung is converting this with the help of an enzyme called as ACE. What is this ACE? All of us know this enzyme that is angiotensin converting enzyme. It is converting the angiotensin. That's why it is called as angiotensin converting enzyme. So this is also very, very important. Then this angiotensin has an important effect of vasoconstriction. It is a vasoconstrictor. So whenever there is a hypotension or a hypovolemia, what it is going to do? It is going to produce angiotensin to and vasoconstrict and increase the BP. It not only stops there, this angiotensin can stimulate one another important substance that is called as aldosterone. This aldosterone, we saw its function in the endocrine physiology also. The aldosterone is going to stimulate the sodium and water reabsorption. So sodium and water reabsorption will be stimulated. So with that, what can happen? There will be an increase in blood volume as well as an increase in blood pressure. So the blood pressure or the hypovolemia is being corrected now in two ways with the help of angiotensin 2 and the aldosterone. Then coming to the next structure, that is the macula densa. What is the function of this macula densa? This macula densa is like a sensor. They are going to sense something. It is going to sense the sodium chloride load. It is going to sense the sodium chloride load. If I have to sense this, what should I have? I should have a specific channel for it. What is that specific channel? That channel is called as NKCC. 
Remember this channel, it is very, very important. All the channels in renal systems are very, very important. This is NKCC. What is the full form? It is sodium potassium two chloride channel. So this is the full form. This is the transported substances. Out of this, it is trans. It, say, it will sense the sodium and chloride role very specifically. Load, load of them will be sensed. So whenever there is an excessive load, whenever there is an excessive load of sodium and chloride, when there will be an excessive load of sodium chloride, whenever there is an increase in GFR. So what should it should do? The kidney is very very important for controlling the GFR. So it will sense it and then it will stop the GFR or reduce the GFR. How does it do? First thing is whenever the sodium chloride is sensed. It will convert the ATP to ADP. From the ADP, they will form one more substance called as adenosine. Adenosine. This adenosine will go to the from macula densa, which is the nearest cell. There is the JG cells are nearby. That's why this apparatus is together. They are called as juxtaglomerular apparatus. It will sense and then send the impulses to the JG cells. The JG cells, what they will do is with the help of adenosine, they will open up the calcium channels. So the calcium entry is happening. Ideally, whenever calcium entry is happening, what will happen to the vesicles? All of us think the vesicle has to fuse and it has to release the renin. But this is the only place where the calcium is decreasing the renin release or decreasing the vesicular fusion. So this is like a paradox. That's why this term is called as calcium paradox. Calcium paradox does not happen anywhere else in the body. Anywhere else in the body, the calcium is just going to increase the levels of vesicular fusion and release a neurotransmitter. Except in kidney, where the calcium is actually stabilizing the vesicles. It is stabilizing the vesicles and decreasing the renin release. So when renin release is decreased, what will happen? Renin was helping to vasoconstrict and sodium reabsorb and increasing the GFR or increasing the blood volume. But right now, renin is decreased. So what will happen? The GFR is going to come down. This entire feedback mechanism is called as tubuloglomerular feedback. This has been asked multiple times. This tubuloglomerular feedback will be there in several options also. So coming to the starting point, whenever there is a rise in GFR, there is an increase in load of NaCl. So whenever there is an increase in load of NaCl, the NKCC will sense it. Then it will form the adenosine and the adenosine will decrease the renin. Adenosine is decreasing the renin. That is most important. If renin is decreased, what will happen? The water reabsorption as well as the sodium reabsorption is going to come down. Then ultimately, what is the end result? The end result is there is a decrease in GFR. So the raised GFR is very easily and nicely corrected by the renin mechanism. This entire feedback is called as tubuloglomerular feedback. What is the tube here? The tube is nothing but our thick ascending limb. The thick ascending limb has the sensors. Glomerulus, what is the glomerulus doing? That is the juxta glomerular cells are not producing the renin in this situation and causing the feedback and reducing the GFR and maintaining the GFR. So this is the entire function of the juxta glomerular apparatus. Then we saw one more cell which is called as the lasis cells. What is its function is? They say its function is very similar to that of the JG cell. It is also involved in renin production. But the quantity of renin produced by these lasis cells is very, very minimal. That's why they say the function of lasis cells is not predominantly known.